Good morning folks, it's going to be a great day. I'd like to start with a basic review of what planets look like in the sky. Now, let's say Saturn looked perfectly flat like this from Earth, which it does not at this time because it tilts and has a different orbital plane, but just go with it. Now, as Saturn rose in the sky, this image would look tilted 90 degrees to the left so that the right side came up first and the rings looked vertical. Midway across the sky, it would appear flat like this again, then when it's set, the left side would appear on top as the rings looked vertical again but with the right side diving down first. Imagine how that changing image changes further based on your differing latitudes on Earth, the ever-changing daily motion of the planets making each new day unique, and the fact that other planets present different tilts, different orbital planes for view, just as the Earth does to the Sun for the seasons. If you've heard Saturn has flipped, it hasn't. It's fine. On with the news. New kind of magnetism. This may be counterintuitive to you, but it is part of the electric universe. Scientists are saying a piece of the barrier reef may break off and create a tsunami. Off the coast of Turkey, near Greece as well, there is a lot of underwater volcanic activity. In the United States, we have power outages, tornadoes, heavy snow. I'll come back to this. Earthquake activity beneath the Katmai volcano has been increasing in Alaska. As always, the links for your weather are below this video. I strongly encourage you to check your local forecast, but today I will be focusing squarely on Draco. Yeah, that's a real picture. The north side has dumped over a foot of snow in many locations. The south convergence line sees tornadoes, wind, thunderstorms. The storm has caused damage from northern Mexico up past the Great Lakes into multiple Canadian provinces. The low is defined and isolated. Here comes the next one on the left, just creeping onshore now. Going next level on space weather analysis, you see a distinct magnetospheric disturbance from around 800 to 2000 UTC. Now during that same period, we see a very rare thing, baseline resonance and multi-line frequencies induced. You see that extra brightness at the bottom during the times in question? Solar wind telemetry from ACE is suggesting that the speed in yellow was rising until about 20 hundred hours. The density in orange is coming down here from what SOHO identifies as a spike in the density around the beginning of those space weather metrics. So take comfort in knowing that our shields are holding up and knowing that instead of ionospheric absorption of solar radiation, it's our magnetosphere doing pretty much all the work. That is a good and welcome sign. You can further see that the ovation prime pulses are becoming stronger during that 8 to 20 period. Looking at these sunspots, these have been total choke artists. They managed to be overcoming a little bit of stage fright in the last 24 hours, developing one little red spot in this leading positive umbral group. It is the primary sunspot feature right now. The region that came over the northeastern limb is a bit of a hodgepodge of magnetic structures, messy and disorganized. Apart from the dark coronal holes, some thin plasma filaments, there have been no earth-facing eruptions. Frankly, the only thing to see is that central sunspot group popping minor ejecta from where I previously mentioned we had one red negative spot developing in the positive blue group. If you're going to watch something on the sun today, it's the development in that grouping. Turn on those harps and manifest another day without quakes and flares. And smile while you do it. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.